Hiya, pals. <clears throat> Hi, pals, and welcome to the Disneyland Paris show. Here's your hosts, Lucy, Chris, and Hugh. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> And now, Disneyland Paris News! Disneyland Paris celebrated Pride Month with a hard ticket event in Walt Disney Studios Park. Donald Duck celebrates his birthday with a special cavalcade in Walt Disney Studios Park. As part of a reuse recycle initiative, guests will soon be able to buy bags and other items made out of themed tarp from Sleeping Beauty's Castle Park. Where are we? <laughs> As part of the remix collection, DLP will release a collectible Euro Disney vinyl disc featuring classic songs. Premier Access Ultimate launched this week. <laughs> oh, that was very scary. Is it Walt? <laughs> is it Walt Disney Studios Park, or is it just Walt Disney Studios? I don't know. I just like I. I wanted to say park at the end of mine because you both said park at the end. Those of the are the kind. Oh no! Of things. Yeah, I, I, I got that. I just suddenly, you know, when you have a sudden like total brain panic. Yes, I, I've been having one of those for the last half hour. Well, ten minutes. <gasps> I've got some What's breaking up? news. Kerry oh. O'Sullivan is going in the morning. Yes, Kerry. I presume she means to Disneyland Paris, not just. I don't. I don't know where else she'd be going. In the morning, <laughs> Kerry, are you packed? So yeah. if you're packed, no. <laughs> you're Team Lucy. If it's still on the clothes horse, you're Team Hugh. Oh, Come me. on now, I'm, be I'm better than you make out. <laughs> you, you've improved over mm. 10 years of marriage. Can I ask, are we looking crisp? Because I'm using a different camera. Oh, uh, Lucy. Chris, Chris. 13 years of I marriage. Know. <laughs> no. oh. I know. No. I knew when he came out my mouth, he's going to correct this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of us even re remember the anniversary on the day. <laughs> Who are those people? Uh, this guy. Did you? Uh, listeners, Hugh points at himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I feel really shaky and nervous because things were the bickering things married all, couple. No, because things almost went a little bit wrong then, and I had to restart mm. right at the last second. And, he was uh, he was frantically unplugging yeah, and plugging things my... in, and I was stood by watching him, just uh, just looking at him, but not trying not to like distract him. And I've yeah. forgotten to bring the little dongly bit for my mouse, which means I've had to do everything lent over the laptop in, <laughs> with all the stuff in the way. So it's just, yeah, my See, heart's been racing. What you listeners racing. and viewers get is a nice calm swan like gliding across the water. And what's actually going on is underneath, the legs are going like that and there's flesh-eating piranha trying to take its legs off. That's it, exactly. And I'm wearing shorts, so it doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, do you know what? It wouldn't be a DLP show, though, if I didn't... I apologise for something to do with the technicalities. Right? <laughs> and thing is, we've had many a compliment on what a good job you do and how good the sound quality is. So mm. you're excused. Excellent. You're excused. I like being excused. How are things, guys? Do you want to launch straight into the news? Or has anyone got any housekeeping? Have we got some any interesting comments going on in the chat? Do, do you want to do a roundup? Have you got your, your hooter? Do you want to do that instead of the roundup sound? No. I'll do both. Okay. Audience trip That's the wrong one. I've pressed the wrong button. I've pressed the wrong button. Let's try that again. Let's try again. Who are they? <laughs> All aboard. Um, <laughs> magical by Sarah was first first in the chat. Oh, so well get done. in, Magical and, um, by Sarah. She also announced the other day that she's going to Disneyland Paris. Oh, good. Yeah. Just that she's going. <laughs> that's I it. Mean, that's Excellent. right, isn't it? Isn't it, Sarah? Isn't that right? Yeah, she was stood in front of the Eiffel Tower or something. Oh. Um, yeah, we got Stacy, we got John, Ginger Fox 83, spat on the table there. Claire, <laughs> Wits Wanderlust, uh, Caitlin's here, Kiva's here. Hello, hello. Elle, Elle's here. Sam, another Claire. <laughs> Claire, <laughs> so many Claire, 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 Lauren, Kerry, Daisy, Nat, Sarah Bird. I think that's everyone. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mac's here too. Mac, we haven't seen Mac Chester for a while. No. Uh, Aaron. I think that's everyone. If I missed anyone, do let did me know. Did you get Nat? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Aaron. Who? Aaron. I did. I think so, yeah. <laughs> the new camera <laughs> looks great. Do you know what the trick is? It's an iPhone. We've, it is an old iPhone. We've been using cause purpose built like proper webcam so you can angle it and do all the clever things. And in the end, we've just gone with an iPhone and it's actually better. Well, it's, it's better than that, actually. You, you wonderful um, Disney Street pals of ours over on Patreon have helped pay for the subscription for what connects this to the software. So 
um yeah so thank, thank you guys you, for Disney supporting Street us because that's Pals. helped us to be able to do this i set, i got it all together probably six or seven weeks ago but it, this is the first time i've been settled enough to actually give it a go and try it out but it, what it means is we can actually have multiple cameras at some point if you want to know Ooh, yeah I know, I know. hello to the dunn family and it's and a- hoffman's hoff hoffmanestro uh, is making their first live stream hello hoffmanestro glad to have you into the family Mm. Benaistro. Welcome along. Does that, does, that, does that make sense? Maybe not. Mm. Welcome before along. You, before you go into the news then, mm. um, I'm parched and there's lots of liquids over there, so... Uh, mm. You've got a choice today, Chris, because uh, there's a couple of interesting things going on here. I've been to a barbecue today. Now, you look first, like you've got a bar there. Yeah, first of all, uh, just a bit of amb- <clears throat> ambience for the listeners. Mm. You could have a, <laughs> uh, a, a Brooklyn Hoppy Lager alcohol, um, alcohol-free beer. Okay. Um, or, I like, I've been, I invented this thing. Um, it's a shandy, but it's um, with alcohol-free beer. And uh, I was trying to think, think of a word that kind of evokes shandy. So I said Nancy. And I, I call her alcohol-free beer and lemonade a Nancy. a Nancy. Now, you could have that, but this is would be a fancy Nancy because it's got <laughs> a, a elderflower and lemon um, kombucha live sparkling cultures lemonade and then this fancy beer. Or you could have... <laughs> um, oh, my word. Hugh really likes to combat masculine stereotypes in his drink choices. You could have a sarsaparilla, <laughs> which is something... Uh, sarsaparilla? You, I, I, I can't even imagine, like, a, a southern guy saying, uh, like, Does, ah, Miss Miss Catherine, I saw you on the veranda drinking a sarsaparilla. Maybe Doc Holliday. I imagine he oh, might it, drink It makes me like think that. of um, little Richie Cunningham. What's he called? What's his name? In, in the, when he's in the Music Man, Ron he's, Howard. Ron Howard in the in the Music Man film. Oh yeah, so, Gary Indiana, Gary Indiana. Alcohol free beer, lemonade. <clears throat> there's a peach and strawberry thing. I like the idea of elderflower. I'm ha- quite happy to have a fancy Nancy. That sounds good. Can I sniff the sarsaparilla? Because I don't know what it smells like. I'm interested. Yeah, I was accidentally like. drinking this neat today before I realised it was a cordial. Nothing uh, makes uh, drunk half the bottle. Cons- Nothing no, 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 makes uh, good radio like a man sniffing a cordial. Hmm. Yeah, and, and a, ma- a man whose nose still isn't right after COVID as well. It's, this sounds smells all right. It's that? rooted. Do you want this with yeah, some lemonade? Is. I don't know, do I? You, you just make, mix me a drink. How yeah, about you, you mix me a drink? You can have some sarsaparilla. Do you know what? I was thinking oh, about yeah. this Tiki Cup song as as we were playing it mm. today. I'm thinking, if only we had some kind of dancing structure who could come up with some kind of dance routine for this that, <laughs> that everyone could I do could it do at home. With this. <laughs> um, someone's saying, can't wait for the Tiki T-shirts. Oh, yeah. Yes. We're waiting for yes. you to come up with a design for that. Yes. Yes. And you though. were wanting to wear, wanting them done for when you went away. Ideally, yeah. I want to get an order in the next When are you going out again? 8th of August. 8th of August. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. We'll see you there. Yeah, we'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> you going to be booked now? We have, yeah. Oh, what for that week? What I booked at it... ten to twelve on Friday night, sat in bed, and the thing is, I regularly price up Disney holidays. I never go on. Mm-hmm. Anybody <laughs> else listening? Do you do the same? Do you price up Disney holidays? And we did know as soon as we got from Walt Disney World, we wanted to make the most of these annual passes and book one. So I was pricing dates and I was pricing ways and I was in my notebook and I was doing some maths and then I ran it past you and I, I thought, okay, that's fine. I nearly closed my notebook, turned off my phone and went to sleep and then I thought, do you know what? I do this all the time. I'm just going to book this beggar. <laughs> so I just, it, three things needed booking. First of all, I got 20% off the Eurostar. Okay, brilliant. We are going cheap this time, guys. So this is an... In- when are you going on the Eurostar? Indirect Eurostar. Ooh, when are you going? Saturday yeah, it's the going, 6th. It's going Saturday. It's going via Italy. <laughs> so, and we're coming back on the Tuesday. So we're only overlapping right, okay. by two days, Ooh. I think. Uh-huh. Um, Should we be getting it warm for us then? Yes, indeed. Oh. So we're going Eurostar, indirect via Lille, and we're staying in a... I tent. can't remember what it's called, but it's tent. it's a little one bedroom apartment right next to the train station in uh, Valderup. Oh, okay. So cool. we'll be getting the I think it's just three euro train in and out every day, and um, but we get slep- separate sleeping areas. We had a chat last week about how mm-hmm. weird it is when the kids are this age yeah. and you all have to turn the lights off while they go to yeah, sleep and you share everything. 
So None um of that. we didn't deliberately book the date because uh, we knew you were going, but afterwards we were we were going we were saying well, we when we, is he when is he? We knew it was sometime when like that. Going? But it, it worked with my work and Hugh's work, so it kind of had to be the You say days. that I haven't booked it off yet. If my boss is watching, uh, can I make a holiday request for a couple but of days? Couple we've, days? <laughs> we've done it all for under na- Oh, and then the third thing I had to book then was the train from Leeds to London, which we've never done before because it's always been prohibitively expensive. And the difference in the new petrol prices and um, the uh, it, we got an... A cheap train as well. It actually worked out cheaper to get the train. Have you got a family train, uh, family pass thing? No. Right. So, so what we did for hours. Have I not talked about this on the show? No. I feel really bad now. So, so we paid for us because you could have saved even more money. What we did for our for our train was we paid thirty pounds for a family rail card. Yeah. And the family rail card allows you to travel as long as you've got a kid with you. You and friends, you can all travel for massive discounts. We've got like. 40 or 50 percent off the cost of the train tickets as well i think we're going we've got what? returns to london for it's wizardry 80 something ah, god damn it for four of us there's three of us and we paid 111 that's still not bad though is it that's not bad at all when you count the fact <clears> that we we usually park outside london and get the tube in so the cost of the tube the cost of the parking the cost of the petrol we thought and i, I like trains and the stress-free <clears> and i can <throat> read my book and bonnie can call of a band it's just nice so like well, we've yeah. saved the money of the rail card in one trip. That, that's yeah. how, how much it was worth. I it. bet you have. I wish so, we had known that. Which one of us is saying, uh, "Are you guys going to end up on the same train as Chris?" Yes, we are. Um, no. Casey no. Junior. Oh yeah, yeah. Casey Junior. So we're overlapping by two days, I think. Awesome. So we're going to have to arrange some kind of get together. Oh, I know yes. we'll probably be doing other things separate, but there, there will be the whole crew will be there. But the yeah. Monday is the day that we'll we'll it'll be our our first full day in there yeah and be your last full day yes as well. so that's correct that works out quite nicely doesn't it yes i was just looking to see what uh what i've got booked well we've nothing <laughs> booked what uh, the first thing i did was check waltz and oh there's another snag i need oh, to talk about snag. um we we booked Walt. we wanted to book waltz but it's booked up for the entire trip that we're there i'm gonna keep checking but i don't know about that but pim kitchen isn't open no, yet. no it's not you, you can't book it and i want to know what the because they usually give priority to people staying in disney hotels and i just mm. think it'll book up immediately but wouldn't it be cool if i could do that no the snag is staying off site um as an annual pass holder you can only book three-day park reservations in advance and right. we're there for four in theory so at the moment they don't i don't know but the school holidays and we all know the park reservations were gone yeah, last week up, but we've got the saturday sunday monday booked and then we're just gonna have to hope on the saturday as soon as we've clocked through the gates that the Tuesday is available so we can book the Tuesday. Yeah. If not... Fun in the village. Well, fun in the village. Park Asterix. And also... Yeah, we can just do the village. We're All in Valderup, which I have never been to, which is a sin. And I know there's a big shopping centre and lots of eateries there. And I think, because we will be vlogging, people would be interested to know what facilities you've got in Valderup. So we might just spend the Tuesday, Valderup, village, shopping, etc. before we go. Mm. We've mm. got... um, What is it? The 8th. Downtown restaurant booked for the evening. And Silver Spur for lunch. Is downtown in the Downtown's the, buff, the buffet one in Marvel. Out of Marvel. I think yeah. I think we would re- like to join you for that. I'm not sure what we can do, but let's have a look and see if we can get a, a if you can if you can book it and we can book it, then I reckon we can get them to give us a table together, can't we? Yeah. So we'll just see. We'll see what we'll we can s- do. We'll see what we can do. This time, we'll see what we can do. This this is exciting. It's all exciting. It's all happening. Oh, so I feel like fast. we're having this this whole conversation in front of a load of people. <laughs> I know. This is the first he's found out about I'm this. Just, uh, just looking through the chat, actually. Um, some someone was just asking a question. It was uh, magical by Sarah. What is the earliest you can book dining if you're staying off camp? Also, mm. would you recommend calling? Right, the most late, the most latest information. More, the most latest information. Terrible superlatives. Oh. Um, the latest information I've seen for general dining, ignore Pim Kitchen because it's not been released yet. Is if you're staying on a Disneyland hotel, it's um, six months now, where it wasn't for a while. It's six months, but also I've heard con- conflicting information that as soon as you register on the app as having your stay, you're able to book. So I don't know if that means that eight months or 12 months you'd be able to, but but if you're not staying on site, it's two months. So that's a significant disadvantage, isn't it? Four mm. months disadvantage. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. It's the way it goes. They want people to stay on site. But the prices, Chris, for staying on site, Goodbye. it was oh, I know. nine for the Marvel Hotel, which we had no intention of staying in because I knew it would be expensive. But I booked through Expedia. And, and so everything within a five mile radius kind of comes up. And <coughs> that was on for £918 a night. I just want to say goodbye yeah, to the Dunn family. Bye, Dunn family. Going to bed early because I've got to Paphos tomorrow. Nice. Oh, very nice. Enjoy. Always going somewhere. Yeah. Fun in Paphos. <laughs> they get about, don't they? They do. Um, yeah, but n- what, what what do you get for nine hundred and eighty? That's, that's at the end of company. What do you get? Yeah. What do you get? What do you get? <laughs> Someone to sit in your chair. Well, look, if they gave me somebody to sit in a chair, I might see the value of it, particularly someone. if that someone was like Captain America or something. But in all seriousness, mm-hmm. what what are you getting for that? You're getting a nice hotel room. Is it more than three hundred pounds a night? Nice. Are the facilities there more than four hundred pounds a night? Nice. Is the swimming pool that good? I just I just can't see what you could get for that price. Per- personally, but we're we're obviously not out of Marvel people. Mm. Maybe mm. one day. Hmm. maybe one day do you get into the parks early with your annual passes you know? yes we do um, we do get the half hour early which is why it's almost not worth staying on and site and there's a special entrance <laughs> isn't there there is secret entrance round the left hand side mm. as you approach so don't even go into under the, the arches go around the, the side and there's a gate there straight in don't tell everybody though I've just tried to add you onto my uh Downtown booking, it says there's no tables available. Ah, uh, sorry, rude. Dude. That's just rude. I know, I'm sorry, guys. I bet if I rang up, yeah, maybe. Then, then they'd probably be able to fit us in because they've already got the table. Booked. Yeah, tell them that uh, but... we're very fast, very quick <laughs> eaters. If that's the problem, we'll, we'll just, I'm gonna have to keep checking for things. I mean, Pim Kitchen is the, I think we'd all like to go to, if oh, I yeah. get Pim I Kitchen, I'll out, try but... get a table for seven, <clears throat> mm-hmm. just, you know. Straight away, because I know that you'd want that too. But yeah. we don't know when that's coming that's out. That's just asking where the secret gate is. Just to reiterate, go to the left of the. Don't go under the the arches to go into the ticket. Um, into the into the gates there. It's completely round the side to the left, and there's. It's normally where you'd exit. Mm. There's a little entrance there. Mm. Yes. What a perk. Chris, how's your uh, sarsaparilla? Do you know what? It's, it's all right. I wouldn't go further than all right, but mainly because you've made it too strong. Hey, do you know it's a very strong tasting thing? Yeah, it is. No, it's, it's quite nice. Do it's, you want to dilute it with some uh, strawberry peach? Yeah, go on. It's not my favourite. Let's make it more fruity. That is already a lot of Disney chat, and we haven't even got in. Shall I go into some Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, let's get into the news, yeah. I'm going to wait till you've poured that, because you're right next to my iPad. <laughs> I'm putting quite a bit in there, Chris. Stop. Thank you. Right. So, Premier Access Ultimate launched this week. Now, we had been told it was 90 euros, but what we now know <clears throat> is it's 90 euros on a weekday and 140 euros on a weekend Ooh. and every day from June the 25th. Because I've... there'll be another new rides included in it. 140. Oh, not on June 25th. Oh, no, that'd be July, wouldn't it? It might be long term, long term, that might be thinking. I think that'll go through the summer holidays and come down in September. They haven't mm. announced <clears> that, <throat> but we can only presume. But 140 euros Each. a day. Now, the thing is, I have recorded a 25-minute 25, uh. 25 Let's Chat About Cues video <laughs> that um, failed to upload this afternoon. So it'll be uploading tomorrow. And um, But spoiler of what i say in that is it worth it if you have the money yes i suppose because if you can go on all 12 attractions you don't need to book a time slot you don't need to wait you just walk up and do it you're gonna have a a day where you go on a lot of attractions but i don't think it's necessary to have fun at disneyland paris and i think i think it's necessary to have fun at disneyland paris (laughs) i don't think buying this is necessary Ah. (laughs) I it's think mandatory. that is, and I'm quite glad in many ways that this is prohibitively expensive for most people. Because mm. if it was 50 euros, they would sell a lot more and people who didn't buy it would have a worse time because of the length of standby queues would go up. Mm. So it's a blessing to people who don't intend to buy it. It's a rich man's game. It is. Mm. 
But we've we've talked we've talked before about you know this this two tier system of, of Disney guests yeah. these days and how we feel. There about was, it. You know, I said before uh, there was a um, you could see in the the eyes of people if um, on the day that we had uh, Genie Plus, they give you a different look now when you get in ahead of them. They look at you like well, there's there's a, there is there's a slight look of hatred. In, in their eyes. Maybe you just never noticed it before. This yeah. might well, no, be in Hugh's vivid before, imagination. Before, honestly, I would give people a look of like, well, fair enough, you know, they they did the fast pass, you know. Mm. That was a sensible thing, fair enough. And now you look at them and you go, you dirty rich. <laughs> Kiva's just said, I'd definitely rather have a nice sit-down meal or two than pay that to skip a few keys. Well, Well, that's it. Yeah, Quite often, I mean, this is what I wish I could uh, say to Bob Chapek from our point of view when we went to Disney World, is I have a Revolut currency card and I load it up, up all year and that is my spending money. The pin number is... <laughs> <laughs> I, can't go o- I can't go over it. Yes, I could go under it, but you know, I do like to spend all of it. But him introducing Genie Plus didn't make me spend more money at Disneyland Paris. It cut down on my merchandise budget and my snack budget. That's all. Now, to him, I mean, Genie Plus is basically money for nothing in terms of overheads, I suppose, compared to um, getting merchandise. But it's getting my money either way. It's mm. just deciding where you put that money, isn't it? As opposed to... it. it but I, I'm with you, Kiva. There are other things I would rather spend my money on you, than skipping the lines. You're also paying for all the rides. You're not paying for tokens mm. to go on whatever it is, 10 rides. You're pay, paying for 10 specific rides. I, thought, I can't remember how many. And you, is, but you know, so if you don't like Tower of Terror, it doesn't matter. You've got a You've got a pass to go on it anyway. Hmm. So yeah. you've got to want to go on we all the found stuff, really, to make it worthwhile. There was one day that we did Genie Plus in Disney World, and it was a day where it was so busy in Hollywood Studios that th- there was just nothing available. And at that, on a day like that, we we felt like we'd been ripped off because the, the, the only things that we could um, lightning lane on those days were shows or... You know, attractions that you you, you just like a meet or something. We ended up going on um, alien swirling saucers <laughs> yeah. again, didn't mm. we? Yeah, whoopee! Um, for you know, forty five quid. But the point is that Disneyland Paris is with this hundred and forty euros is you won't be rif- ripped off because you're guaranteed mm. to go on all those twelve rides. Yeah. The one thing is you can only go on them once. So you can't use it to just keep going round and round on Buzz Lightyear, which we all know is what I would do. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you paid 140 euros or something, um, I'd, I'd want to have the freedom to, to go, I'm just going to ride uh, Phantom Manor and Pirates Dumbo. all day long. Just Dumbo. Mm. Just Dumbo. <laughs> and it might not be worth it for people, uh, for younger children who can't go on things like Crusher's Coaster and Tower of Terror and Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain. Because I think that's where you get the most value in terms of skipping queues. Mm. I just want to say, again, she's disappeared up above the chat, but I think it was Squash Pickle oh, said, I saw that, yeah. hello. Um, <laughs> Thank we, you for all your podcast. Me and a few friends just booked to go to Avengers Campus opening date from 19th to 21st. Oh, a just... Post A-level treat. Awesome. I am so jealous of that. <laughs> I didn't get the just booked bit and I was going to say, is that coincidence that you already booked that date and then they announced the opening date because that would be pretty jammy. But you are going to have an amazing time and I can't believe... Well, I might... I still have a park reservation for the 21st and I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, the plan was to leave Hugh and Bonnie at home and just run over, take some video and come back again. But I, I, I don't know if... Would you? Yeah. On the 21st? Why not? <laughs> I probably can't, actually. If I'm honest, there's probably reasons why I can't. <laughs> but but I'd like to. But you, can't, but you can't think of any right <laughs> Can now. I pretend to be... There's, always, re- there's yeah. always reasons you can't. I, I like the idea that people might see us in the park and think that you're together <laughs> especially if you're holding hands but why wouldn't we be we all know what I'm, we all know I'm what i'm gonna be pricing up tonight don't we we all know that but i, ju- I just honestly i i thought it would be money well spent to kind of run over there and do Speaking that Speaking um, the videos and stuff magical by sarah says yes. when's your next vlog out I'm guessing she means a Walt Disney World stuff. Right, I've done it. I'm trying to alternate sit down about Disneyland Paris and Walt Disney World vlogs. And my sit down about Disneyland Paris is ready to go and upload. So I will upload it so that it goes live at about 5 p.m. tomorrow. And as soon as that done, I'll start editing the next one. And the answer is, it all depends how much free time I have this week. <laughs> I'm really not able to put a lot of 
um, creativity and effort into these vlogs because there's so much to do. I'm just putting clips together in the order they happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because sometimes that's just got what you've got to do. Yeah. I might do a vlog. And it's, <laughs> and it's about something. I'll just, just quickly just show you. Um, He's under the table, those people. A few weeks ago, we were uh, <laughs> talking on the show about um, how annoying it is to have to take sun like prescription sunglasses off and top them for my glasses when I go inside in a, in a park. And then um, Claire T-Rex was talking about... Now, this isn't what she was talking about, but she inspired me to buy some clip-on sunglasses. Uh, so, listeners, I'm wearing, I've just clipped these onto my sunglasses, and they, fl they flip up. And um, I could tell Lucy didn't think they're cool because she said... Mm, well, you don't They're care. Cool. She said, well, well, you don't care what people think, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you, now, you know, when you're on holiday, she said, you, you, you don't care, which means that says all that, you know, I need to know about what she thinks about them. But uh, yeah, I've got these, I don't, I don't care. And I found these, the sort of Wayfarer style, and my glasses aren't Wayfarer shaped, a bit more rounded, but these fit over them quite nicely. Don't you think? Seamless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I look like Max Headroom? Oh, no, he doesn't wear, does he wear sunglasses? <laughs> no, sometimes he does. It's very strange um, looking at them from the side. I wasn't looking at them from the side. Sometimes before. they give the impression that you've got massive eyebrows. <laughs> Sarah Bird says it's giving her short circuit vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Stephanie. Hey, Liz Lips, your mother was a snowblower. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm right. polarised. Now, the thing is... Is that short circuit two quote there? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. We were a bit with this Premier Access Ultimate. Um, we're like, oh, people aren't going to buy it. It's, it won't ruin everyone else's time. It's too expensive. It is already sold out for the first two days. <laughs> right, okay. Well, <sighs> it was sold out for the first two days. I believe that that was Wednesday and Thursday. I, I haven't been keeping up as to whether it's sold out every other day. It might just be people trying it or Disney doesn't know how many to sell, perhaps. So they're <sighs> capping it low and they might increase it. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you know all these capacity things. That, now I know we don't. I don't have any confirmation of this or anything at all. But I was looking on quite a few um, Facebook pages and stuff this week because because I, I follow a lot of them and I do that. I'm, I'm a I'm a creeper in a lot of these pages. Yeah. And uh, there were people talking about these signs going up quite regularly, and they are mm. doing. But apparently, one of the cast members had said to them, "Well, you know, before the pandemic, the, we we had hundred thousand capacity, and now it's more like, I think it's something like." 35 in the main and 15 in the studio. So right. it's, it's quite considerably less mm. still by the sounds of it. So all those signs going up, yes, it means you're going to have longer waiting times and things, but it's possibly not quite as bad as you think. But, I mean, this this must be down to staffing ratios because... I would think so. You've also got the capacity of small... It's a small world, but there's almost always a major ride going under... It's not just the under. capacity, though, is it? It's, it's, it's the fact that that's a continuous loader as well. Yeah. It means that you, it, it rarely has huge, huge queues on it, does it? And, mm. and you're losing massive footfall there, aren't you? Mm, you are. I think that's... Um, I've been looking at wait times this week because I've been making that video. And when I check today, mm. Casey... Ju I know it's a Sunday mm. and it's summer, but Casey Jr. and... The storybook. The storybook boat oh, ride. Yeah. We're both at 40 minutes. Wow. Now, we've been on very busy days when they've been 20 minutes. And I I think that must be a knock-on from it's the same area of the park and the kind of attraction that would attract It's a Small World, which has... Because I looked this up this week. It's got over 3,000 people an hour mm -hmm. capacity. And those two rides have got less than that. I don't know how much they've got, but the slower loading, they've got, got less the, capacity. The boats are really slow loading. They right? are, but there's hardly ever a wait. Well, no. a significant wait, is there? No. But it, it affects other bits of the um, other bits of the park and other bits of the wait as well. But that doesn't take you from 100,000 to 35,000. No. That must be restaurants and staffing. And maybe it's like um, crowd control cast members. Or guest flow. They don't call it crowd control. Guest flow cast members. Those kind of things, because I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it. It'll get sorted, won't it, eventually? We'll, yeah. They'll get their heads around it. You've got to think that they, they'll they've be got, expecting it busier and busier, especially as we get towards summer. So They've got paper you know, mats and they're out. getting rid of the hand gel now. So, you know, life's you go. basically back to normal. Bye, right. Elle. Elle's had to dip out because the toddler's woken up. Oh, no. Ours does that and she's not even a toddler. She might be listening to us right now. Anyway. Right, I thought you might like this, Hugh. 
the remix collection. I'll be the judge of that. You know, we looked at that last mm. week. It was all sort of 90s yeah, and chunky. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because uh, we were discuss- discussing whether it said uh, Euro down one arm and Disney, and then what was on the other arm? It was blank, I noticed, uh, on yeah. further pictures. But what was this you, t- you got to say? Um, they've, they're releasing um, a collectible Euro Disney vinyl. Oh, yeah, so oh, it, I've, seen yeah, I've, I've seen, seen that. It. Seen it. With, with classic, with classic mm-hmm. Euro Disney songs on. Yep. I would quite like to have that in the house. <laughs> I just yeah, would. just to know you've got it. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure how often we play it, but yeah. it could be good just to have a Disney night, couldn't it? Mm. <laughs> we could put it on every night's a Disney night. Well, do you know? I was I was looking. We've got. I don't know if other people have cupboards like this in the kitchen, but we put that Moonlight Magic popcorn bucket in the cupboard, and at the same, we mm. also had a Disneyland Paris popcorn bucket. We've also got some rather tall. Um, tree things that we got a slushy from in the Disney village and vet and our refillable mugs and all these kind of things just end up stuffed in this cupboard. And I think when will we ever use them for the purpose they're made for? And then I thought it could be quite fun to have a Disney nostalgia sort of party. And invite all you guys. Yeah, where you where you eat popcorn <laughs> from popcorn buckets our and, address drink, is and drink slushies. 37 Disney streets. Um, but then I think, hang on, we do that Every Sunday night. <laughs> Who needs a special night? We once discussed having a, a birthday show that was going to be like a, a live party. Do you remember that? Yeah, we did. Because we thought we were that popular. <laughs> <laughs> but back when we had 15 people downloading our, our yeah. podcast yeah. every week. Yeah. Right. Speaking of which, by the way, did we mention last week that we were this... We're actually three years old now. Oh yeah, mm, we're, from the cla- um, not from the Disneyland Paris show. No, from though. the yeah. classic, from the classic show. We've got last all, week we've got was all our, our teeth. Anniversary. We can walk and talk. Every other year, we did a bit of a thing to celebrate, but we haven't done this year. But I think we maybe leave that till September because then this show will be three years old. Oh, and we were also talking about doing a giveaway, weren't we, at some point soon? Um, I, I've just remembered I've got something, Chris, for you and for the giveaway. Uh, <laughs> I picked these up uh, from Olga's Cantina. I've got you some beer mats. Oh, what? They're even better than the Coke bottle. Yeah, they are. They're actually the the nicer on the um, the heads side. Some of these tails ones. I, I, I'll be honest though, I've kept the the Ewok one because it's the best. When, uh, when I was a uh, <laughs> so we, 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 there's got we've got a couple more to put in the um, in the giveaway package as well. Well, we've got something else to get to put in the giveaway package as well. And I I, I haven't got I'll the have pictures it, ready, but I will bring them next week. But Sam Cartwright. Has uh, has been making friend uh, of the show Sam friend Cartwright, of the show, Sam Cartwright, who I also have a trip report for, for today as well. Mm-hmm. She has uh, been making Mickey ears, and she's going to donate a pair of those for our giveaway as well. Hot How dog! Is that? Hot gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we saw them. Um, They're very, very nice. Really, really cool. Yeah. Mm. So, but she said um, you can have either of these pairs that, that I've sent you pictures of, or we can I can make you something that's a surprise. So oh. I said, give us a surprise. Oh, okay. Because I do really like those other ears, but I think I think I'd like to not know what they're going to look like. But they were I'll, put, I'll make sure the pictures are here to show next week, um, so that you can have a look at, at them. And what else have we got at the moment within our, our giveaway? Uh, Hugh's going to do a drawing. Yeah, we've got we've got some thirtieth merchandise from DLP. I've got a key ring and a a, a couple of key rings. I think I've got at the moment. Um, I've actually got the board some game j- Villainous available as well, so I'm going to chuck that in there. Some Joffrey's. <laughs> 50th anniversary coffee from Disney World. <laughs> it's that or it's going on the garden, but uh, people uh, did not like the sound of me doing that in the chat last time. No. Putting it in the I'm, garden. I'm definitely to, against that. To, I, I do have a, a cat spray uh, I, I forgot I had, so I won't be putting the coffee in the garden. Just because I, I quite just, like yeah. coffee. I, I would feel a little bit aggrieved. If I do I like coffee. Um, I just don't like the anxious feeling, and it's, I think it, it's bad for my gut. Uh, I do have some decaf, I'm, and I will be having that decaf Joffrey's. Excellent. Um, but I, I think in terms King of the giveaway, Joffrey. anyway, King Joffrey. In terms of the giveaway, I think we'll get. Let's get back from from the DLP trip, mm-hmm. and then we'll sort something the out joint at the end of August. DLP I think. trip, yes. <laughs> As we'll, is now. We'll, we'll work out how you can get in, how you can put your name forward for it, and and everything, and then we'll yeah. do a nice prize draw type thing, mm-hmm. and give a bunch of stuff away. Yeah, just just for fun, like for kicks. I'm just I'm while you guys are talking, my mind wandered a little bit and you onto were, some so thoughts. Weren't listening. I was absolutely listening, <laughs> but I'm just thinking with this capacity thing. It's because I'm panicking about getting the last day for the park passes, and you're saying yeah. this joint DLP trip, and I'm going ah. Oh. 
But do you think that's why hotel rooms are so expensive? Do you think they're at a reduced capacity in hotels? I think everywhere seems to be reduced capacity at the moment. I don't think anyone's quite expected things to get going again as mm. quickly as they have. Mm. But I, th- I also think that this last half term, certainly in the UK, this the half term just gone has been a big eye opener for a lot of places, airports in particular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and they're going to have to do something about it, and they're going to have to do something quick. But yeah, I, I, I don't know about the capacity situation at, at DLP, whether it's down to staffing or what. They did mm. lay a lot of people off, didn't they? So, mm. Well, we know that, I mean, a lot of things have trickled through, like the reducing the age for yeah. employment yeah, from 18 so, yeah. to 16 and oh. and things like that. That's telltale signs that they're struggling a bit, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Who knows? Now, you sent me this one via Messenger, uh, Chris. Did I? Yeah. So, oh. do you all remember the tarp that covered... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sleeping Beauty's Castle to make it look like Sleeping Beauty's Castle. I love this story. I think this is brilliant. This this is why I love Disneyland Paris so much. Don't you wish you could have some of it? it oh, <laughs> do you think? I think they'll have sold out by August. Oh, that's out. There's quite a lot. Well, of let's, let's, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. What are we anyway, talking yeah, about? Yeah, what are we talking about? They're going to, well, it said bags and other items and I for the life of me can't imagine what the other items are going to be they're going to make things tarps they're yeah. gonna, <laughs> tents they're gonna yeah they're gonna make things out of the tarp in a, a an initiative to reuse and recycle and reduce their cab their footprint etc um and I just think this is an amazing idea I mean most of that will either be sky blue or a weird gray or whatever or a bit of pink but it's just knowing what it is I it's just how really genuine special that sentiment is because are these bags and wallets replacing shelf space of ones or are they going to be in addition to ones that they're going to make anyway do you know what I mean like really if they wanted to um like reduce the carbon footprint they'd maybe turn it into eco bricks or something <laughs> you know no, what I mean? yeah but how would they dispose of it the point is eco bricks n- well okay all right okay I'd love an eco brick would you buy an eco, eco brick from the disney store <laughs> if this <they're, laughs> is the object if, you, if i bought bought an eco brick <laughs> yeah uh, but no it's a good idea but i just you know what i mean uh, it's like going well you know we're, we're, we're recycling it <laughs> Just turning it into more merchandise. I don't think, it, and I think it's going to be in addition to what you would be making anyway. I think I've been I've been cynical. I think you're underestimating how much people loved the the period of time when the castle was in tarp and how much they would want that. If you yeah. think about, for instance, Bob Sangwell, friend of the show, Bob Sangwell, who I don't know if you've listened to to his life story on, on I haven't Chat yet, Disney, no. I'm right? Going to, I'm going but to. when he was talking about about his life story he went to a cinema that was shutting down one that he went to in his childhood mm. and he went in there and said uh, got any Disney stuff and I said oh yeah we've got some posters and some some you know all this marketing stuff go, go in that room there and fill your boots <laughs> and he did and lots of people do that so I can imagine that, yeah. that somebody someone mm. will have gone to Disney and gone to a staff member and said when that tarp comes down can I have all of <laughs> can it can I have please? it yeah <laughs> can I just have it yeah um, so yeah at least they're making use of it I guess mm-hmm. but you're right you're right to be cynical no I just it it just it feels it, you can be cynical if you like, but it feels really genuine and friendly gesture, and it's another thing that I mean we don't know how much they're going to charge for them yet. It's, but, I mean it's better than it putting feels, it in a landfill. We can probably guess it how feels much they're going to charge for them. Guest led <laughs> and it feels ethic led, and so many of the stories that we do of the Disney Corporation as a whole feel neither ethically centered nor guest centered. That's what I'm saying now. Okay, maybe there is cynicism behind it. And maybe when we find out that it's going to be 289 euros per bag, per tote bag, we'll feel differently. But right mm. now, I'm saying this is why Disneyland Paris is my the park of my heart. Rather than Walt Disney World, we've just come back from, I had an amazing time, but it never feels like is I it, have that connection is to it. the park it. of your bum? <laughs> your mind? My stomach. So? I think it's the park of my stomach. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> okay, then. Right. Almost the same as bum. Aaron says as 50, bum. 50 pounds is optimistic. Uh, are you talking about the bags? I mean, oops. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Hannah, Hannah Marie, Marie was saying they're definitely going to be about 50 pounds a bag. Mm. Claire Till says trainers made of tarp, I'd wear them. Mm. Yeah. Tap shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? I need, <laughs> I need some tarp shoes to 
do my tap dancing. Do your tap with. dancing. All oh, right, let's go up. Donald Duck had a birthday. Another one? Is that allowed? Well, it lasted one day. He had five cavalcades in, let's all admit it, the worst park. And that was it. I mean, Mickey Mouse got a whole year. He got new outfits. He got a celebration. He got cupcakes. Now, oh, no, I to know... Be, to be fair, Donald got... Donald got an advert when it was when it was his big birthday. The worst pack. Oops. Which what, what do you mean? It, it's Walt Disney Studios park. Okay. <laughs> Have I just said that Disneyland Paris is the park of my heart and then totally sailed it down the river? A little bit. That felt that felt dirty. But my bit. point is, it you know it, it was come and gone. Now, poor Donald Duck is he gets accused of a lot of things. People say he's got anger issues. They say he's got a chip on his shoulder. They think he's got small man syndrome. But just look at the way he's treated. It's not fair. I think justice for ducks. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. It was Pride this week. I know. Yesterday, in fact. Yeah. How amazing did that look? It looked fantastic. And actually, what a f- what a great use of the studios just, you know, to talk about it being the worst park and stuff like you just did a minute ago, Lucy, you know, when you're bagging DLP. It's um, a good party park. But Laura, Laura, I was talking to Laura about it earlier and she said, why, why, do you think they've done it in that just to give the studio something? Uh, but there's a really good space there to have a stage. Yes. That that you can have a proper party feel there and I don't think it would work as well in the hub. And so projections on Tower, to me. Projections of ta- on Tower of Terror are, well, the, they're fantastic. We've seen a few projection mm. shows there. But also, I think they're probably easier to program. You know, if you're doing just a one-off yeah. event um, than doing it on the Claire castle. Claire said early in the chat that um, there's a bit of a viral tweet going on about that. And uh, one of the comments, someone had said, fake news. Real fans know that Tower of Terror is Guardians of the Galaxy themed in Disneyland. Wrong park, mate. That was what? that was his problem. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I she presume says, I don't he think counts, I've ever cringed more. Counts himself as a real fan, yeah. presumably. Mm. Um, yeah. So, Mika was headlining. Oh, Mika! Do you know what? Flipping love Mika. Mika hosted the um, Eurovision Song Contest the other week. Did he? Yeah, and he was brilliant. And he did a he did a bit of music in the middle of it. And that you know that normally in the bit before the votes and stuff, they have someone up there does an awful show. Justin Timberlake doing something from Trolls. One year they had this thing where loads of people were dancing on like plastic that was all wet above everybody. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> It was weird. Don't they were forget all like Michael crawling Flatland. about on. This was the first year in about 20, year, 20, 20 years that we haven't watched it because it, yeah. we were. Get, oh, I was busy just before the trip. So I was, you know, I'm, I'm still going to catch up on it. Mm. You, sh- you should because it was a really good year this year. Yeah. Now, my boss's son is a session mu. I say he's the keyboardist for Mika. He's actually a session musician who regularly tours with Mika. Mm. And. He's two weeks younger than me, so it was his 40th birthday last night. And um, Vicky, my boss, had been saying, oh, he's abroad, so we can't celebrate with him, but he'll be on stage. And I just put two and two together and thought he was doing the Pride event with Mika, and I was so excited. Mm -hmm. And I messaged her about it with pictures and everything, and I can't see Curtis, I looked. And it turns out, because he'd he'd been pre-booked and because he's a session musician, he was actually on stage with the script in Amsterdam. And they all sung happy birthday to him, 13,000 people. I mean, it's nice for him to sing happy birthday, but the script. And not as good as Mika, I agree. Anyway, so <laughs> that was a bit disappointing because I was totally going to wave around a, a you know, a name dropping thing there, which I kind of did anyway, mm, mm. but he wasn't there. Right, let's go around. So the Tower of Terror got rainbowed. Yes. And they sort of did the lights, so it said love they just blocked out those lights which i think was very nice Mm. they did they did an interesting thing now this is for this event only but they made one of the bathrooms i think it's the one behind the art of animation They made it a gender neutral bathroom for the night yeah i saw that yeah um it's just it's really accommodating to the audience that they were attracting i think i understand why they couldn't do it in a family theme park permanently especially one that caters for so many different countries and cultures. Mm -hmm. But knowing that that would make their audience more comfortable, I think is just so many big thumbs way, way up to Disneyland Paris. Right, we we can't get away from corporate culture though. So Rhino Shield were there. You know our new best friend. Oh, Rhino Shield. They had a nice flowery wall. It looked very nice for Instagram. And they unbreakable were, flowery wall. <laughs> and they were <laughs> they were giving away grip minis, which oh. look they look like pop sockets but sausage shaped instead of yeah round. Okay. We we're all 
gagging for more Rhino Shield merchandise. I know we are. Um, there was a rare, rare meet and greets, including Edgar Pleakley. And do you know who Pleakley is? Yeah, from Lilo and Stitch. Yes, thank you. Because I was in his shop. dress as well. In his dress mm-hmm. and Kronk. And I, I, I did feel like Disney were outing their characters and including them on the parade. You know, in the. Okay. Edgar right. from um, Aristocats. Yes. Sorry, I thought it was wrong for a second there. Cast members took part in a in a pride parade where they were all wearing... It was a bit like the flash mob that they did for the 25th, but they were wearing brightly coloured T-shirts and neutral coloured bottoms and they did a little bit of a dance down there. Natasha Rafalski kicked it off. <laughs> I thought I thought you meant she kicked off. Kick off. <laughs> yeah, she's not happy about it. Um, <laughs> and you know I've spoken before how great I think it is that we've got a visible hands-on mingling around the crowd kind of president of Disneyland Paris Mm -hmm. and again they've gone into hiding in America and the American parks and you know that if you listen to the fan media it's through fear of getting booed or limbs ripped off and I think it's it's a real sign of her culture over here that she she's got such a good relationship with the fan and the community and the cast members where she can just be right there in the middle of the park launching this kind of event. Mm. Um, Edna Mode was the warm-up act. Oh, I saw that. that was oh, that, she was strutting away. Edna Mode. I, you know, everyone thinks if they could be friends with a character, who Blast would they guess. be friends with? And I've had various thoughts over the years, but I've now decided I would... I would be an excellent friend of Edna Mode. <laughs> oh, thank you, darling. I really think that might be my calling. I really do. Um, there was a meant to be a lip sync competition. It's popular these days, isn't it? Lip-sync. Which I was already a little confused about. I thought, okay, I'm really interested to see how this goes. Would it be members of the public doing it or was it kind of a pre-choreographed Donald thing? Donald versus Mickey. Lip yeah, sync, you know. I didn't know what it was because all I heard was lip sync and then it was cancelled at mm. the last minute. Mm. Now, this sent off a bit of a panic amongst people who'd bought tickets on social media because rumour has it that um, meet and greets were going to be cancelled as well. This was 24 hours before the event. Everyone got very upset, but it was confirmed in time prior to the event. No other elements had been cancelled. Mm. It was only the lip sync competition, so nobody was mm. shortchanged. And... You don't know why. It might have been logistics or it, there could have been all sorts of reasons. There was a bar selling shots. Yeah. One shots. For, <laughs> for, for 25 euros, you could taste the whole rainbow. Ooh. Yeah. Five euros each. 25 euros for six, I think it was. Is that right? I think that's what it was. So, yeah. And then, yeah. then they got, uh, they've also got uh, Brooklyn IPA as well on. I'd love to get battered in a park. I had one drink uh I cut into my six months off, Chris, and I had Mm -hmm. a drink in the park. Well, it was in this. I had a yub nub, and it just made me feel tired for the rest of the day. So (laughs) Monday the 8th of August then, Hugh. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Let's get smashed. Uh, What was I going to say? Cusco's poison. Poison for Cusco. The the shots, though, did you you see the the list of of drinks? No. There were were shots. Well, they were called shots, but every single one of them sounded like it was a cocktail. So there were numerous different elements to it. So there'll have been longer shots. I saw that. Can you imagine the queue at that bar, though? Six cocktails for 25 euros. Can you imagine the queue at that bar? (sighs) But it'd be worth it, wouldn't it? It Well, it'd be like when you want uh, not a uh, a coffee, but but everyone else is getting a coffee. Yes. That's why we <laughs> that's why we never go to Joffrey's in um, Disney World is because we'll see something we go, Oh, I really want that and then we'll look at the we'll look at the, the queue and it doesn't the queue doesn't look that long, but I always go, No, everyone will be getting a hot drink, forget it. Mm. We've never been to Joffrey's. You have to suck it up well, at I some point. I don't know about you. I think Genie plus it. The name yeah. of the shots was red, yellow, green, blue. That's how yeah. they were branding it, wasn't it? They, it was colours. Did wasn't there something interesting like Thoughtful Apple or something like that. I can't remember. Like a, re- a really strange like. emotional way of saying <clears> it. <throat> there were some nice looking um, non-alcoholic beverages as well on there from memory. It was 20 past. And then... Goodness me. My ne- I haven't even done the trip report. <gasps> my ne- well, haven't even got through the news yet. My next... Well, this is the final bullet point of the yeah. final story. It just says loads of merchandise. I think at some point I started to screenshot photos and list the merchandise and it was just... All That's you need to know, l- anything you want to buy in Disneyland Paris, you can ni- now buy with a mm. rainbow on it. I, d- I don't think I can go through the whole gamut. Aaron says uh, troubled apple. 
Troubled apple, that's Troubled. what it was. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Is that how you, is that that how you prepare a, it? Like, a bad translation. That's how you prepare <laughs> it. Lightly trouble an apple over a, a, a warm s- a pan of water. A matchstick. Yeah. Oh. Right. <laughs> that, that, that resulted in some dead air, that poor troubled mm. apple. Right, I'm done, Chris. Yeah, should we do a trip, no, you've trip got some All right, jokes. well, I'm going to press this button first. Audience trip round but at the right time this time. So we have got a trip report. <clears throat> We've got a couple of shout outs as well. Now this is quite a long trip report, so we just need to be, be aware that we might go over time a little bit here today. Um, but this is from, well, it's from Sam and Alex Cartwright. Now it's come from Sam, but as I started reading it, either she speaks about herself in the third person quite a lot, um, or Alex has written bits of this, or they've done it between the two of them, I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna read through this. Settle down everybody. Um, it's quite a story. Uh, we set off on Saturday, me and Sam and Oscar, uh, who's 11, Margot, who's 3, Summer, who's 2, and Otis, who's 1. My mum and youngest brother, 22, also decided to come, but stayed separately and stayed at Art of Marvel. So they were staying at... Um, so it's eight Davey of Crockett. them. Yeah. The plan was to head down south from Salford the day before, our Eurotunnel crossing, and do the Harry Potter tour in Watford and stay in a hotel there, but it turned out to be a bit over-ambitious. Mm-hmm. Um, they missed the slot um, oh. at Harry Potter, unfortunately. Ooh. Ooh. So, that was an expensive mistake. Yeah, a little bit, isn't it? Um, oh, she says Alex wrote it. All right, there we go. There we go. Thanks, Sam. Um, the first day was really a bit of a nightmare as we got to our hotel and our car wouldn't fit under the barrier for the car park because we had a roof box fitted. Uh-oh. So we had to park miles away and then had to walk back and get all the stuff we needed for the baby and the little ones uh, and cart it all back. Oh. Sucks. Oh. Uh, a bit like you and Lucy, I don't drive. This is Alex. So Sam was doing all the driving. She was a bit nervous. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> she was a bit nervous about driving in France, but she did so well. She said it was very easy. Most of it just the mo- just one motorway. Now, when we've driven down, Laura's done all the driving in in France as well. So I, um, I can feel that. I I very rarely driven abroad. I usually let Laura do all that. I, I do don't know why. Driving. Just it's just how it happens. Um. We arrived at David Crockett late afternoon on the Sunday and we were all exhausted, so just decided to get unpacked and have something to eat and get the kids in bed ready for an early day in the parks. We had a, a plan to park at the Art of Marvel every day and meet up with uh, with them, them, his mum and brother and use it as a bit of a base. It worked really well, even if explaining this to the security every day um, was hard work with minimal French language skills. Mm. Started in Disneyland Park at 8.30am and found out we'd made a big mistake. Margot's autistic and they'd had a letter from the doctor explaining so they could get a disability wristband, but couldn't find the letter anywhere. Oh. Sam went to City Hall to see if there was anything they could do with the letter, but the cast member was really unhelpful and a little bit rude. Mm. Okay. Um, and then he said, I know it's our fault for not bringing the letter, but she said she was very dismissive. Uh, this was our only negative experience with mm. any cast member on the entire trip. Everyone else was really friendly. Mm. It was also hard to try and do anything about the situation as we didn't have a phone signal and limited Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Mm. So a real bit of advice to anyone traveling with someone with special needs, they will not make any exceptions without proof of the disability. So don't be daft like us. Oh, Remember to triple check you packed your letter. I really like that <clears> Alex, <throat> after a negative experience, though, acknowledged that that was the only experience and everybody else was lovely because I, I do know quite often people will have an experience like that and go... Well, it can turn your whole trip, can't it? Yeah, you, and go, Disneyland got Paris cast members are awful. Yeah. Mm, the human, the human. But that, that sucks, that really sucks for you. As it turned out, Margot was absolutely fine queuing up. Not massive lines, but anything under 20 to 30 minutes, she was fine. Oh, good. And then he's putting brackets. In fact, we queued for nearly an hour to meet Olaf on the third day and I had no idea it would take that long and she did amazingly well. The girls loved Fantasyland. We did most of the smaller rides, met Tigger and Piglet and, and me and Oscar <laughs> were able to get on Star Tours. They're both massive Star Wars fans. Margot's favourite ride was the carousel. She rode it four times You've and got kept t-shirt on for Chris. the horses. I do have a Star Tours t-shirt on here. It's not in, it's not embossed anymore. It's all flat. Oh really? It goes flat. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't wear mine because I'm I I get incredibly like worried about them decaying in the wash. So mine's still embossed. It's my only Disney shirt, so it, I tend to pull it out on a Sunday when, yeah. I, when I come over here. <laughs> um, another bit of advice for parents with special needs kids: just go with the flow, make their time special. I never imagined I would be riding the carousel over and over, but Margot adored it. Mm-hmm. You just need to be flexible and accept the idea that the special time you had in your head may not be anything like what they actually want to do when you get there. It's a bit of a balancing act because you want them to experience everything the place has to offer. But the main thing is they have a lovely time. Don't force it. 
I think that's the same with all kids as well, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Certainly from my yeah. experience. I, I agree. And that's... It's very pragmatic. Really yeah. Very pragmatic people here. But yeah. it, it's just... It's <laughs> being with your child and seeing them enjoy something. And if that enjoyment comes from the carousel, then that's, mm. you know... That, that's, how you, that's how you Ollie get your Dumbo. magic. The yeah. Of times yeah. Dumbo. Bonnie was in love with <clears> the community <throat> centre in one of the resorts, which was just a room with some craft stuff in it. Yeah, uh, you know. Oh, like, they had blank paper. Uh, she couldn't yeah. believe it. <laughs> of all the magical things we could have done, she wanted to go back to the community center and, like, yeah, they find they find joy in like the things you wouldn't expect. Mm. But that, but you appreciate that. I liked it because she liked it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, another thing that they realized quite early on was that Margot wanted to be picked up constantly. She got tired very quickly. Uh, the little ones were in a double buggy, but we ended up renting a stroller for the rest of our stay and stored it in his mum's room. Mm. It was pricey at 107 euros for two days, but some of that was a deposit that you get back when you return it. Gosh. Um, but it was a real lifesaver. My hands yeah. were killing me carrying her around. I'm worried about that with Ollie this time. Cause, yeah. Because he can be a bit of a sod. Um, I don't mind having him on my shoulders. He's just going to have to learn to walk. He's five now. He, he can mm. do it. He should be fine. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot for them. It yeah. is. It is. Uh, we ate in two amazing table service restaurants during our stay. Firstly, the Manhattan restaurant at the Art of Marvel. Gorgeous, chilled out setting, amazing service, and the food was incredible. I'm a vegan and I was a bit worried that there wouldn't be many options, but there was loads of stuff at every place that we ate at, quick service included. That's good to know. The second one was Auberge de Cendrillon, the one that we can never pronounce. Yeah. Um, this was the highlight of our trip. The princesses were absolutely amazing with the girls. I was worried that they may not speak English, but they all spoke perfect English and then Spanish to the next table as well. Oh, aren't they amazing? And aren't the interactions were unbelievable. Uh, I was a wreck holding back the tears. Yeah. This meal, uh, the meal is very expensive. Another reason that, that I was holding back the tears. And although the cast members were so lovely, the service was pretty slow. Nonetheless, if you have children who love princesses, do not miss on this out on this experience. Go now, on and book it now. Can Ooh, I wait. just interrupt there because? We, I think it's kind of important <clears throat> that at these very expensive character meals that they don't rush you through the meal because we've had, and again in Disney World really, we've had character meals where we've been in and out in 40 minutes and it's cost us over $100. And yeah, we've got pictures with all the um, characters, but we think, did we really get $100 worth of value out of that food that we ate and that? And making it quite, I think it's, quite deliberate in auberge to give the princesses time to go around to give you time to enjoy the atmosphere yeah. you don't really want it to be too quick it's well and they don't have to be quick because the princesses like we, mm. we've had mickey and donald um uh who was it we had pluto come around on our first trip to disney world and you could tell pluto was due on his break oh no it was goofy <laughs> and he was um yeah it was goofy because pluto was good because we scratched his nose and, I think and it played was with pluto his at, um and it was Pluto. Okay. And he, he he came over and he reached out for Bonnie's autograph book, signed it and walked oh. off. Was it was that on the video that you've already yes. that you've put out? Right. Because I also noticed about that Pluto. I pointed this out to Laura. He was stood up, stood up. He like he was as tall as Goofy stood up <laughs> as he walked away from you. Right. Um, which which seemed a really odd and out. He had a swagger. Me. I think he was Mancunian. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, carrying on. Um we only spent half a day at Hollywood Studios. Half of that was in the queue for Olaf. We didn't get the same feeling as we did with Disneyland Park. I could walk around Disneyland all day without even going on a ride. Mm. It's stunning to look at and experience. Yeah. Whereas I was, I, I always, uh, whereas I think the studios is more of a do the attractions you want to do as efficiently as possible and get back to Disneyland Correct. Park yeah. ASAP kind of place. Some of the individual experiences and attractions are great. Sam's yeah. favorite ride was the Tower of Teva, Terror, <laughs> Teva, even though she now thinks she had some kind of post-traumatic stress from being so terrified <laughs> on it. But I think it just lacks a bit of continuity. So hopefully the Avengers Campus and other editions will improve things. I think it will. I, I think it's going to get a lot better over the next few years. I think if what we're expecting from the lake transpires, it will be a, a the exact opposite of what you've just said. I think I think it will be somewhere where you can just be and you can sit and you can look at the water. Mm. Look at the water. Um, I don't think Avengers Campus will do that necessarily because I, it's quite a small footprint. It is, and it's, it's and the it's same quite space that you industrialized. Well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope we get Star Wars. I hope they still do it. Oh, that'd be good, yeah. wouldn't it? Please. Please. <laughs> We've got over a thousand subscribers now. Mm. Listen to me. <laughs> I've got a sway. Yeah. <laughs> Look how cool I am with my clip on sunglasses. Please. Another thing we'd say about traveling with young kids, especially if you're driving, don't hold out too much hope for getting much done on your travel days. We managed to have a few good hours in the park on the day we left, but the arrival day was a bit of a write-off. I would not plan too much for these days and see anything you do 
manage as, to to do as a bonus. I think next time we're going to stay for longer because we didn't have a chance to explore Davy Crockett Ranch or go swimming or anything at the resort. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was an amazing holiday. We're already thinking about planning our next trip, thinking of maybe as soon as February because we've got Disney Blues big time. Seeing the updates from Hugh and Lucy's trip has got us wanting to organise a big Walt Disney World trip as well. Uh, we'll need a few years to sort that one out, though. Finally, we just want to say a big thank you to you guys. I don't think we would have ended up doing this trip if we hadn't come across your podcast. It was, I was very lucky growing up because my grandparents lived in Florida, so I went to Walt Disney World many times. I only ever went to DLP once, though, when I was very young, so I never really considered it as an alternative. Sam, on the other hand, this was her first time in France, DLP, and she loved it. I think DLP is an amazing place, and we're going to be going every chance we can get from now on. Cheers, guys. We've Sam converted, yeah. <laughs> I, that actually makes me a bit teary because I know what Disney Parks, Disney Paris means to me. I mean, you guys know what it means to us. I mean, we're here all the time. But when I hear that someone else is kind of, they're having the, the birth of their passions, that really excites me. That was a lovely report. It's really nice. And useful. Good information there. Yeah. There's been some interesting chat going on uh, whilst we've been talking i just noticed which wonderlust has said i wish i could find a photo of what the double stroller looks like in the mm. parks we're trying to decide if we need to bring our wagon or if we should make do with the rental stroller the kids are six and three and then someone's asked are you allowed wagons now you are allowed them aren't you because they're, they're yeah. banned in america aren't they i think i yeah. said you couldn't they but, are banned in america but, yes, i think they frowned upon here but mm. again <laughs> looking at some of the at some of the pages on Facebook when people ask about them generally the answer is yeah you're allowed to take them people don't the people don't like it though <laughs> I don't yeah. honestly if you need I'm, to get around you need to we them. moan about a lot of things I've never been like oh these no. wagons are ruining my trip I've, I've not I've seen them I've never been bothered no, by them at all. Not at all all these wagons these wagons um, never been bothered by them at all and what? I think in many ways our I was missing the pushchair a bit with Bonnie. I know she's seven, but we were just talking to our friends and we would have liked to have done some late nights with her asleep in the pushchair the way we did when she was four. Yeah, yeah. And now that she ha- has to be awake and walking, it's a lot harder to do it. And just te- take a wag. If you want to take a wag and well, yeah, take a wagon. Yeah, why spend money on something when you get there if you've got, if you've got the capacity to take something mm. yourself anyway? That's what I think. And you're allowed to just do it. Oh, uh, Stacey says we saw loads of little wagons. Mm, just yeah. <clears throat> if that's what you want to do, you do that. Even if they're not allowed, most of them will probably just let you in because uh, I, mean, I, not big I wore rules, the wrong sorry. kind of mask for uh, like over 24 hours before someone finally said, oh, excuse me, um, this mask is not allowed. Well, <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, if I'll we just it, say I'd, that it'd been a whole day. wagons are banned in the same way that smoking is banned. Yeah. Mm. You know. I, can I ask you though, um, is it is it a push wagon or a pull wagon? Because I, I was literally reading about this early today and someone was saying, if you've got a pull wagon, it is incredibly tiring when you're walking around literally all day oh, for days to pull it along. Mm. Whereas if you're pushing like you do with a, a push chair or a pram. You can rest on it. It's, it's, yeah, you can rest on it. It's not, it it's <laughs> take not the weight off so your feet. If, if it's a pull one, maybe don't. If it's a push one, take it. Do. Have we got time for a couple of shout outs? Yeah. Excellent. Well, the first shout I haven't prepared... You don't need to prepare. These are voices you can do. <laughs> well, probably. Allegedly. Yeah, probably. Okay, the first one is um, we, we have a new Disney Street pal over on Patreon. And uh, as, as is our usual thing, we give them a shout out, don't we? That's true. We so this is, this is Natalie Holland. And Natalie. she's not asked for anything particular. She just said, I'd go with Kermit, please, because I've always loved Kermit. Natalie, thank you so much for becoming a patron of the Disneyland Paris show. That was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Yay! Was that Kermit Walken? I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, let's do Kermit Walken. Um, <laughs> Kermit the Frog mm-hmm. here. See, that was better than mine. Why that, you, what, but that's why all you, I can why say. Why don't you do it? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did sentence to get you in, and I didn't do that. So I should have started with, hmm, Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Natalie, was that? Natalie, yes. Thank you, right. Natalie. Sorry, that was an awful impression. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, secondly... What if she cancels a membership now just based on that? I, that wasn't I, good enough. I, I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> secondly, we've had, a, um, we've, we've had an email through from Emma Dickinson. Now, what she said is that um, she's recently found the podcast and has been listening to all of our episodes and the vlogs as well, and they're great, but, but she has a question. Oh. Her little girl thinks she's married to Mickey Mouse. Oh, yes. She met him in Paris when she was three... And uh, she just announced to me when she got home that they got married. 
Um, they've since been lucky enough to get back to Disneyland Paris and Mickey was amazing. And she's just wondering whether Mickey might be able to just say hello, a little bit of a hello to her daughter, Sophie. Sophie. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking how to play this. Like, you know, I, I can't just be like, I can't, I can't play them with the right thing because it's, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's her name? Sophie. Sophie. <laughs> okay, so, right, ignore all that. <clears throat> now, now, shh, get, get listening. Hi, Sophie. Ha, I'm so glad ha, that I got to see you and I hope to see you soon. Ha, bye, Sophie. Ha, gosh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sophie Wait. is the best. <laughs> oh, that's a cute story. It though, is really isn't it? cute. Yeah, it made me smile a lot when I got that email. I hope that didn't terrify That's her. just so I'm sure gorgeous. it did terrify <laughs> I'm so sorry. These are unofficial. <laughs> uh, impressions unofficial fan impressions Ginger Fox has been a- away for a little while and just come back saying their, da- their daughter's sick in bed it seems like everyone's kids are having problems tonight aren't they my son's got yeah. a uh, Ollie's got a bit of a funny stomach and didn't go to bed very well tonight he's asleep now but and uh, and then we've had was it one of the Claire's I can't remember somebody else's child woke up as well earlier on uh, Ella L. was it L? L. oh yeah L that's right L that's right uh, right I'm I'm out of Disneyland Paris chat, right. believe it or yes. not. So unless anyone else has got anything important to say or do, or any really urgent things going in the chat, I'm going to wrap up. Right, well, just as part of the wrap-up, we're ready to do another Patreon show straight after this, Early Magic Times. I've posted the link, and the link should be there on Working this week for those of you who tried to join last week and it wasn't. But if there's any problems, we'll fix it when we get there. Um, so that, that's that from there. If you want to do Patreon, if you want to get involved in Patreon, um, just head on over, follow the link in the in the description. And it's there. Yeah. Mm. Right. Thank you all very much for coming. I've been Lucy. These have been the boys. And goodbye. Yay! <laughs> See you real soon. <laughs> Ta-da!